Welcome back to Movie Recaps. Today I will show you a comedy, drama, fantasy film from 2020, titled My Missing Valentine. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. Yang Xiaoqi is a young woman that has always done things quicker than everyone else. She laughs at a joke before it's finished, smiles before the picture is taken, and even wakes up before the alarm rings. Now that she's a young woman, she works at the post office, a rather tedious and boring job. Every day she sees Atai, a man that sends a letter a day and for some reason won't just buy a set of mail stamps and just put the letters in the mailbox instead of waiting in line. When Xiao Qi asks him about this, he doesn't answer, because he never speaks when he comes by. She also has a rather sad life. Her job doesn't pay very well, so she lives in a tiny apartment surrounded by nosy loud neighbors. She buys the bare minimum at a shop just to take a lot of free soup home and she takes postcards from the undelivered box and takes pictures of them to upload them on social media to make it look like she's gone places. Her only follower is a person called Amy, who likes all her posts. One afternoon, after she's done with work, she's walking through the park when she sees a man, Lu Wen Sen, teaching a group of women how to dance. Keeping her distance, she starts copying the choreography, but Wen Sen sees her and drags her to join the group so they can all dance together. Xiao Qi has a lot of fun, but when the class is over, she tries to flee, only to have Wen Sen follow her to talk to her. He explains his part classes are free and gives her his card while praising her natural beauty. In return, Xiao Qi tells her about her job in the post office, and Wen Sen promises to visit her there soon. Afterward, she has dinner alone while listening to the radio and starts thinking about the day her father left when she was just a teenager. She had bumped into him on the street and he told her he was going to buy tofu, but he never came back. Seven months later, they had to move out of the house because they couldn't afford it anymore. And Xiao Qi found among her things a weird key with the number 30A on it that she couldn't remember what it belonged to. Her mom was giving away all of her father's belongings, but Xiao Qi grabbed his radio and kept it to herself. The next day at work, a man tries to cut in line by picking up a number from the floor, but Xiao Qi has seen him and calls him out for it. The man gets angry and starts making a scene, but luckily Wen Sen arrives and keeps him back until an employee comes to take him away. Then, Wen Sen flirts a bit with Xiao Qi and while pretending to fill in a form, she asks her out by writing the question on a piece of paper. She writes down her answer as well, wondering if they aren't moving too fast, but he thinks her being fast is cute, so they agree to go to the movies tomorrow. She spends the evening listening to the radio and pretending it's when Sen the one singing the love songs for her. The following day, when she takes the bus, he notices a man touching a woman inappropriately, and she takes some pictures for proof. She also notices a man with glasses staring at a chubby girl, and she lets the girl know this to see if maybe they get lucky with each other. Wen Sen visits her at work again and brings her homemade lunch, which she never gets to have, and she almost cries at how delicious it is. After work, they take a taxi to the movies, and afterward, they chat about their plans for Valentine's Day, which is tomorrow. Xiao Qi explains she's never celebrated it, and Wen Sen tells him he doesn't have plans either. He used to have a girlfriend that died of leukemia, and nowadays he spends most of his time visiting the orphanage he grew up in. There's one little girl that is in urgent need of a heart transplant, but it's incredibly expensive, so Xiao Qi gets an idea to help. The city is running a teamwork competition during Valentine's Day and the winners get 200,000 in money and a pair of plane tickets. Wen Sen accepts to enter with her and so they spend the rest of the evening practicing the different games they'll have to compete at. To return home, they take the bus instead of a taxi, which is empty except for them. The pair holds hands and even tries to kiss, but at that moment, the bus driver suddenly hits the brakes and makes them flinch, ruining the moment. Back in her apartment, Xiao Qi starts choosing what clothes she'll wear and calls the radio to tell the host all about her Valentine's plans. In the morning, she puts on the cute outfit she prepared and takes the bus, which is quite crowded. There she sees the glasses man and the chubby girl from the day before going on a date together, and next to her sits the creepy man, who is about to touch her chest. But suddenly, Xiao Qi blinks and finds herself in bed again in the morning, still wearing the cute outfit, seeing her skin is red because of sunburn, and finding sand in her shoes. She'll have to think about this later though, because she doesn't want to be late for the competition, so she takes the bus and finds it strangely empty except for a couple of people. When she arrives at her destination, she sees it is also empty, and after asking around, she discovers it's Monday, not Sunday, and Valentine's Day has already passed. Since everyone says it's Monday, Xiao Qi rushes to work, where A Tai brings a letter heavier than usual. His face is swollen with a wound, his eye is black and blue, and this time he actually speaks, telling her thanks and goodbye. After work, she goes to the park to see if she can find Wen Sen, but his students tell her they haven't heard from him. Unaware that the news is reporting various strange occurrences during Valentine's Day like a woman teleporting out of a bus, Xiao Qi goes to the police station to report her missing day, but she isn't taken very seriously. Xiao Qi returns home, where she listens to the radio host talk about lost objects until the power goes out and suddenly, she hears some noises coming from her wardrobe. When she opens it, she finds a guy with a funny tongue, a tail, 
and reptile goggles that claims to be a gecko. He says geckos are in charge of keeping an eye on the things people lose or forget they have before handing her a box with a bunch of stuff from her childhood, like her first pacifier and a doll, but also a small key with the number 38 on it. When she asks about her dad, who is also lost, the gecko shows her some pictures of him playing chess with a monk in the countryside. Next, she wants to ask about her missing day, but the gecko has had enough and closes shop right before she wakes up, realizing it's all been a dream. The following day, during lunch break, she finds her picture hanging at a photography shop. When she asks the clerk about it, he tells him a guy with a pig head had taken a bunch of pictures of her and allowed him to keep that one because it was so pretty, but he doesn't know who he is nor does he has his phone number. She convinces him to gift her the picture before going back to work, and when a client asks for the key to his P.O. box, she realizes something, the key she had at home is a P.O. box key, 38 is the number on Atai's letters too, and the clerk's description of a pig head matches Atai's wounds. However, Atai hasn't come today, which is very unusual. Desperate for an answer, Xiao Qi travels back to her childhood home to recover that little key, but while she tries to sneak in and out without being noticed, her mother finds her anyway. They share lunch and chat about life, and Xiao Qi is shocked to discover her mom is the Amy that keeps liking her social media posts. When she returns to her apartment, she throws away Wen Sen's business card and starts searching on the internet for beach photographs that could match the background with the one A Tai took, to no avail. The next day, she asks his boss if a key number can tell them what branch it belongs to, but that's not possible, so Xiao Qi announces she's taking her annual leave. From then on, Xiao Qi begins traveling through various coastal towns, visiting post offices to try his key in the P.O. boxes and trying to find the beach from the picture. After several failed attempts, she finally finds the right P.O. box, which is filled with letters that go back years. Inside one of the many letters she finds a map, which she follows until she finds the spot on the beach where her picture had been taken. She sits on the sand and opens the envelope with the latest date, finding inside a letter that says it will be the last one, and a whole pile of photographs which makes her realize this is the extra heavy letter he brought the last time she saw him. As she begins to read the letters, Xiao Qi finally remembers that she used to know A Tai when she was a kid. The story goes back to the beginning then, and this time, it is from A Tai's point of view. Photography has always been a hobby of his, but most importantly, people remember him with the nickname of Turtle because he suffers the exact opposite problem of Xiao Qi's, he's slower than everybody else. Nobody wanted to play with him at school, he can't catch mosquitoes, and even his watch is slower than the official time. Because of this, he's become a bus driver, since the low speed limit for buses allows him to drive calmly. The reason why he goes to the post office every day is because of Xiao Qi, a girl he met as a child but who doesn't remember him now. Years after they saw each other for the last time as kids, he met her again in high school by chance on a bus, so he started taking the same bus every day to see her, and even waited outside her school, but she never noticed him. He never got the courage to speak to her and one day she simply moved away, and again he didn't see her for years until he became an adult and got a job. Xiao Qi happens to take the bus A Tai drives, so he asks his uncle who is also his boss for the afternoon shift so he can see her every day. He also starts going to the post office to send the letters instead of using the mailbox just to see her, and he would always take extra queue numbers so he could wait for the one she calls for next. He's there when Wen Sen starts visiting Xiao Qi, sees them flirt, and even notices on the desk the piece of paper where they agree to go to the movies together. Feeling gloomy, A Tai leaves the building and finds Wen Sen on the street, talking on the phone to someone that he tells I love you to and even mentions lounging around in bed all day. Getting suspicious, A Tai starts following Wen Sen around and discovers he indeed already has a lover, a woman that occasionally cooks for him. The lunch this woman gives him is the one he later gives Xiao Qi, an event that A Tai also witnesses. When later he sees that the two of them are going out together, A Tai makes all passengers get out of his bus claiming there is a problem with the engine then proceeds to follow Xiao Qi and Wen Sen during their date, even going as far as entering the movie theater with them. His stalking is interrupted when his uncle calls him to demand him to move the bus because a cop is about to take it away. A Tai rushes back to his vehicle and gets the police officer to leave without a fine by, again, using the excuse of a bad engine. When he sits behind the wheel and gets ready to go, Wen Sen and Xiao Qi suddenly board the bus, since this is the line that takes them home. A Tai watches them during the whole trip, and when they are about to kiss, he pushes the brakes to stop them. Moments later, after Xiao Qi gets off the bus, a group of thugs and a woman board the bus as well. It turns out Wen Sen used to date this woman, who just like Xiao Qi isn't very pretty, and he asked her to lend him 500,000 for a little girl's transplant and then never called her again. Wen Sen starts crying, saying the little girl died and he had been tricked by some fake organ donors, but the gang leader who is also the woman's brother doesn't buy his act, and tells him he must pay 3 million in 3 days or they'll make their life hell. Before they leave, they throw Wen Sen on the floor and kick him a couple of times, so A Tai wants to take advantage of that and kick him as well, but he's too slow and Wen Sen easily gets him off him. 
while they struggle against each other, they accidentally bump into the radio and turn it on just in time to hear Xiao Qi tell the host about her Valentine's Day plans. Wen Sen finds this very sweet, and this attitude only enrages A Tai, who jumps on him again to fight him. This time Wen Sen doesn't hesitate to punch him before getting off the bus, and this explains the state of A Tai's face the next time he visits Xiao Qi. Before that last visit however, something strange happens. After the fight with Wen Sen, A Tai parks the bus and spends the night there, and when he wakes up, he surprises himself by catching a mosquito. He then notices a very particular situation, everything around him is frozen in time. People, animals, even plants and the wind, none of it moves except himself, and his uncle doesn't pick up the phone either. After looking around the street for a while confirming nobody can move or even notice what he's doing, he steals a bicycle from a random guy and uses it to search for Xiao Qi, who is at the bus about to be touched by the creep. A Tai proceeds to move his hand away, turn every passenger's head toward the windows, and then he takes the driver out of the bus so he can drive it instead as he promises Xiao Qi to take her somewhere special. Then he starts telling Xiao Qi their childhood story. They met during a special weekend while they both were in Taijun for a holiday, and they both also ended up in a multiple car crash where they got injured and A Tai lost his parents. Afterward, they also were sent to the same hospital room, where they chatted a lot and bonded while keeping each other company. Since Xiao Qi's injuries weren't as serious as A Tai's broken leg, she was discharged first, but they promised they would write to each other from then on. A Tai didn't know where he was going to live at the time, so he gave Xiao Qi one of his father's P.O. Box's keys so she could send her letters there. He started to write her often after she left, and once he was discharged, he went to the post office to check the box, he found two letters from Xiao Qi, but also all of his, which made him realize she lived too far away to come and pick hers. He never stopped writing her though, even if she never wrote again, because thinking about her and the woman she would become is what helped him to keep going without his parents. A Tai drives the bus to the town where they met, and takes Xiao Qi's frozen body to the beach, where he makes her pose in various different ways to take a bunch of pictures. They don't start traveling back until the sun starts to set, and in the middle of the road, A Tai is shocked to find another person that can still move, Xiao Qi's father. After he boards the bus, he explains that this isn't the first time the world has stopped for 24 hours for him. Xiao Qi's father is just like A Tai, a slow mover, and their lives function kinda like a savings account, because of interest, time accumulates, and they get an extra day. Xiao Qi, who moves faster, loses one, and for the rest of the people nothing changes, which explains why later in the news they talk about a disappearing girl in the bus. He also confesses that the day he abandoned his family he was actually intending to go to jump off a building, and that's when the world stopped for him. After the 24 hours passed, he decided he couldn't live in such a world, so he left to travel around while taking odd jobs here and there while trying to find himself, which he still hasn't been able to achieve to this day. When the time comes for Xiao Qi's father to get off at his stop, the monk Xiao Qi had seen on the pictures comes to pick him up, and the man asks A Tai for a favor, to buy for Xiao Qi the tofu he promised 10 years ago. A Tai promises he will after taking a picture of Xiao Qi and her father together. Afterward, he takes Xiao Qi back to her apartment, where he puts her down on her bed and, after failing a couple of times at kissing her lips, he kisses her forehead instead. He also draws the map and writes the last letter that he'd send later in the heavier envelope before leaving. After this experience, he accepts this is time for him to let go, and this is why when he goes to the post office to send the last letter, he tells her goodbye. As he leaves the building, A Tai is run over by a truck. One year later, Xiao Qi has transferred and is now working in the post office where PO Box 38 is, but she hasn't received any letters since the day of the incident. She thinks she's going to spend Valentine's Day alone again, but that day, she is surprised by a sudden visit, it's A Tai, who is walking with the aid of crutches. Xiao Qi starts crying as soon as she sees him, and only gets more emotional when she notices the letter he brings is for her. He's also brought the tofu her father had asked for, and they agree to get lunch together after work as A Tai starts crying as well. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.